Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. This is episode 18 in which um, Abuela weaves. And um, this is a podcast about knitting and sometimes some sewing. Um, if I didn't say my name is Donna, I'm coming to you from the northern part of Virginia in Manassas. And um, let's get started with um, what we have today. I have some finished objects. I have works in progress. I have our fiber-related children's literature book to share with you. And um, some giveaways today. And um, some information um, about what's coming up very soon. So um, let me go ahead and get started with the finished objects. I have two pair of finished socks. The last time I talked to you, I showed you my um, Kiss the Girl socks. Well, I showed you one sock and I was finishing the second one. So now I have a pair and these are Kiss the Girls. It's a colorway from the Cozy Knitter on her Bliss base. And I knit these in um, a size one Chai Goo needles. And I forget which method I used right now. So that pair of socks is finished. And I also finished a second pair. If you are a regular watcher, Thank you for coming back. Um, and if you're new, thank you for coming. Um, but if you're a regular watcher, you've seen a while back, I started a little experiment with um, what kind of gauge I would get with different methods of knitting socks. And so I wanted to um, reduce the variables, so I used the same brand of yarn on the same base. So I keep having to say uh, what this is, and I hope it doesn't sound like the broken record that it feels like. But again, this is Cozy Knitter Bliss Base, and this particular colorway is called Princess Party. And they are, um, they have a speckled stripe, white stripes and pink stripes and the contrast um, mini skein is in the pink color. I wanted to do it on the toes, but um, right here was where I needed to start the decreases and I had just done pink, so I decided to just continue with the, um, the yarn as it was. And of course, one ends up on pink and one ends up on without the pink, but oh well. I um, have been trying different things with all these socks, trying to find maybe what's the very best fit um, and um, preferred style of knitting socks for me. So I try a new toe and I really ha never try new toes. I've done just a rounded toe and a wedge toe, which are pretty much the same thing, just decreases in different places. Um, but this time, I'm not even gonna tell you the name because one, I don't remember what the name was and I'm not gonna repeat it. It was really easy to do and actually the fit is good. But when you put them on, they just look strange to me because when you have, make a sock with a wedge toe, you have those decreases on both sides of your foot. L little toe side, big toe side. They are the same. And in this case, um, you're doing that pretty much that same decrease, but you're doing it in three places. So you end up with, and I don't think I'm going to be able to show you exactly. Well, I'll just do it like this then. So there's one. Here's a second. And here's a third. So on the top of my foot, one of these comes not on the side, but on the top. And then the other two are over on the bottom. And it, it feels fine. It looks okay. It's just, it looks, to me, it's odd that you don't have that symmetry. So I probably won't do that one again, although it was very easy to do. And as I said, the fit's good. So, um, and here it looks like it would be right, but that's what's more on the top of your foot. And then these two are on the bottom of your foot. I did do a garter stitch heel this time. Um, and I thought, you know, garter stitch is stretchier. So if you're putting that in that heel area where the arch, you know, you need more there for my high arch, that might fit me better. And the fit's good. I did not do the Dutch toe this time. I just did it, the, I mean, heel turn. I just did what's my usual heel turn. But these are Princess Party. So now I only have one more pair to finish for my little experiment, things that I had cast on. Um, and need to get finished and that is the bunny foo foo colorway and if you saw I think my last episode I was showing using the um, Addy flexi flips on those not done one more stitch because I was working on these and that's what I was doing to finish all these up is just um, 
doing a pair at a time, get them done, move to the next pair. So I have one more pair to go. So hopefully in the next podcast, I'll have the last from the sock experiment to show you and maybe some other socks to, to knit then. So the, that, those are my first two finished objects. My third finished object is my impressionist shawl, which has been a mystery knit along with Helen Stewart. So if you are someone who hasn't wanted to see it, um, you'll want to be looking away shortly. I think most people probably, if, if you've been looking any place, might have seen it because the knit along did um, end, well, the last clue was not last Saturday, but Saturday before. So I actually finished it on Saturday last week. So I, every clue I took a week to do and I was happy with that progress. I did make some changes. And the changes weren't significant. They were um, more that I wanted to use as much of the color C as I could. Color C was the darkest color. It was what I wanted to be the predominant color and I knew you used the most of it. But you use the most of it because it's at the end when you have over 500 stitches on your needle. So you're using up a lot of it going back and forth which doesn't give a big block of color. It gives the long line of color but not that big block. So um, I did a few things um, trying to just use as much of the yarn as possible and that was adding some additional stripes from color A because I had a lot of that left and um, I ended up having an extra 10 rows of garters so one row across and back would be you know two rows and you get that one garter bump so I did that which put an extra 30 stitches I think an extra 30 stitches on my needles and when you go to bind off, you're at over 530. So I was at over 560. And um, it was a Pico bind off. So that's always, you know, a little more uh, time consuming. But I did time it. I did it in three different sessions. And it took me two and a half hours to do a Pico bind off. So yeah, a while. But um, if you like that bind off, well worth it for such a large shop. So let me stop rambling and um, show you the big top of the shawl. There's no way to hold this thing up and show it all because it's so long. It's a crescent shaped shawl and you can see it has lace sections and lots of fading in and out of the different colors. Okay, so I can just show you it goes all the way over here. And all the way across here. I have not measured it. I always measure my shawls because I used to participate in the um, 12 shawls in the year. So like 12 shawls in 2018. And um, I did do over 12 shawls last year, but I don't think I went over and entered them. And um, but they always want the measurements. They want to know how long and how deep your shawl is. Actually, I don't think they, they like to know how long it is, but it's not required. But how deep it is, is, is the requirement of the knit along that it be at least 10 inches deep to qualify as a shawl. So um, I always measure them, but I haven't measured this one. I'll just tell you, it more than spans the length of the couch in my family room. It's really big. Um, I am very pleased with it. If you've watched before, you know that um, I was making this in memory of my friend Jean. I had dyed the yarn um, for that purpose. And um, it actually, when I finished, made me very sad, which I don't think I was expecting. But, you know, I spent a lot of time with dyeing yarns in her, and, and doing the bags. And um, I think that just really kept me occupied. And then all of a sudden I felt like, I'm done and I think that just left me with some sad feelings but um, I, I'm, I'm better now I, I can look at it and um, next week you'll uh, next episode you'll see it on the mannequin by the way since I'm remembering to say something the shawl that's on the mannequin is the hundred acre wood shawl by Helen Stewart it is a single skein shawl and it um, has some really cool um, stitches in it because she did this in conjunction with little skein in the big woods and 
um, she always um, puts things out in sets uh, where she'll have bags and a, a theme usually uh, as far as I can recall literature related themes and she asked Helen to design something to go along with Winnie the Pooh and so she um, created this shawl in two sizes this is the smaller size or the small size and I did it in Madeline Tosh Merino light which is a single weight it's in the colorway ginger and I added some beads so let me grab that here. or maybe I'll just put a picture in here so that you can see along the edge I happen to have these beads and I just thought oh I think I'll just add those to the bind off I was gonna do the same thing with the um, impressionist shawl here um, I had some purple beads that um, had a different color on the inside that went nicely with the shawl but when it came down to it I thought okay 500 and I think I was five over 560 stitches to bind off and Pico bind offs it's kind of like forward and back forward and back so it's a lot of stitches and beading I just kind of got lazy and said I know I, I want to finish and so I didn't do the beads which you know would have been okay to do but I did do it on this shawl because I had I had beads and it's not as as large a shawl as you can see it's more of a shawlette so that is that shawl in case you're wondering and I have a project page for everything on my Ravelry page so if you wanted any more information um, feel free to go over and look at the project page I'm C L A U S S D K on Ravelry and that's there on my project page we also have a group over on Ravelry called in a pickle knitting and if you'd like to uh, look, have a look at that group that is where you can introduce yourself you can ask questions you can participate in make-alongs and um, we have a, a continuous sock make-along going on over there so if you're uh, at all interested or use Ravelry um, please check us out and join the group we'd love to have you over there and um, I always appreciate hearing who you are if you are inclined to um, put that in don't feel you don't have to and don't feel like you need to um, if that's not who you are it's rarely who I am either so that's just fine but I have to say I really do enjoy hearing about you and where you're from and and your knitting story or anything else that you like to share so um, do I do appreciate um, anyone who feels like talking in the uh, introductions thread over there so that's our Ravelry group now where was I I think that's all I have in finished objects let me move on to works in progress so before I talk about this first work in progress um, I want to talk about my left the yarn that I had left over from the impressionist shawl as I said I was trying to use up a lot of the yarn and particularly that darkest shade but I also thought um, as I was knitting the shawl I really want to put a square of each of these colors in my coziest memory blanket and so while I wanted to have left over I did want to have at least six grams of everything left over because that's how much it takes me usually to do a square or at least so I feel comfortable not running out in a square I want to have six grams so I did add those squares and I'm going to show you that but I'll show you what then I ultimately had left over when I finished knitting the shawl this was my color a the light color and I had 19 grams left but then I put in um, probably six grams in the um, blanket so this is probably I don't even know what number so I just said 13 grams of yarn and then my color B was the um, more orchid shade and this color I had 10 grams left and um, this so this is probably four after doing the square and the last color because I was really trying to use that up I finished with six grams and this is what I have left over I made a little mini skein out of that and that's all I have left over of that so I'd say I did pretty well with that one and um, I was happy at that so I went to my cozy memory blanket and I do the pattern by Kemper Ray which is on Ravelry and it's a free pattern I use a size 2 needle and mine is in fingering weight so let's see here we are um, my rows right now are six across so after adding my three shawl colors here I added two more at the end here and one more at the end here so the way I'm doing this um, it it has arrowed decreases and here is my center so here is where there is an X 
And I did have a viewer ask me a while back, and I sort of forgot to, I, I remembered it a couple times, but I've always forgotten to mention on the podcast. She asked, how do you get them so they're the right direction? And um, so I would like to explain that, but I can't write it out because it's, it's like a, it's not a book, but it's like really hard to follow when I try to put it into words. And so I thought I would try to show you in a picture. Um, I'm still going to try to do that, but I, I, I just can't quite figure the way. I will tell you this though, when you're going, when I'm going up to do a new row, okay, so I have some are going this way and some are going this way. I have to start in the center. If you start at the edges, then you're going across, you're going to reach a point where you can't connect or you have to go in there and sew it together because of what you do to make your squares where you're picking up stitches and then sometimes you're casting stitches on, but you'll end up in a place where you can't do it. So I start with, I started with this one, but I could have started with this one where I pick up stitches and then cast on, um, cast on stitches going up. You just always have to know that you're always going to be coming this way back and forth. So you're making, you need to know that, and I always put a little pin right here. This is my, this is where I need that decreased spine to be going. It has to end here. So I probably cast on here. Um, I mean, um, picked up stitches here and cast on this way. Then I came over and did this one. And now I can pick up stitches along both sides and I can continue to do that this way and this way. Now, what I'm going to do now, because I have now 12 rows of six. So I have 72 squares. I'm now going to start going around. So I'm going to do a strip up both sides and then across both of the tops. I think that's how I have to do it to make it work. In order to start that, I know this is rambly. I'm sorry. I, it's so hard to explain. This is my center. To start doing the ones that are going to go along the side, I need to start here with either this one and go up or this one and go down and then you'd still be able to um, cast on because here your decrease is going to be up here so you can ca uh, pick up stitches cast on and make this square and then just continue to do pick up pick up and you're fine then here I'll be able to pick up pick up and go this way okay to do the other side I need to again that's why I have the center mark this is where I need to start do either one here or one here and then go down and up. You know, it feels like you should be able to just put one on, but I have twice had to rip a square out because I wasn't thinking. I just, oh, I'll start here and made my little square. That's all great. Um, and until you come here, because if you've got this square here and your corners over here, you can't pick up stitches here. You've got to pick them up here and cast on so that you can be going this way and then you'd have to sew those two pieces together. So that's why it's just weird if you're going to try and do a pattern with your um, those decreased lines. I'm going to put a picture here if I can, um, maybe just kind of a close up to sh so you can see those lines um, if that will help. I hope whoever had asked that question that uh, you're still listening and not angry that I never got back to you and that that made any sense at all, okay? So this is my, this is a work in progress, a long-term work in progress, but I did work on it, which I don't do that often and added six more squares. I'm, I am pleased with that. So my next work in progress is actually not quite a work in progress. Um, I did tell you last episode that my yarn had ended up coming that day for my next project. So this is the, the yarn and let me get, um, the magazine here. So my pattern is in this uh, summer 2018 issue of Creative Knitting. It's this cover vest and it's called the Yvonne vest. And it is made from, I did order the yarn that they used. It is made from Mango Moon Summer Breeze, which is a sport weight yarn, 50% linen, 45% cotton, and 5% polyamide or nylon really. And you're going to use a size 5 and a size 6 needle and an F crochet hook. I haven't read the pattern all the way through, so I don't know what the crochet hook's for. Maybe a provisional cast on someplace or some kind of finishing. I'm not sure. 
So I've started swatching. That's all I've got. And what I don't like, I wish I bought an extra ball. I thought I did actually, or maybe I did buy an extra ball, but um, I hope I don't end up needing it because to, on this gauge swatch, and which I'm not done with, um, you need to wash it and dry it the same way you're going to treat the garment to see what really happens. I've never knit with um, a linen cotton blend, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. It actually feels okay to knit with, the little bit that I've done there. I have listened to some other podcasters talk about knitting with linen and it kind of bothered their hands. Some people thought it was, I mean, it's kind of crunchy. Maybe because this has a cotton blend in it, it's a little bit more, uh, so it's a little softer on your skin, I'm not sure. Um, but it so far had not been bothering me at all. Um, it, it's definitely different because it doesn't have the stretch that wool does. So, um, you know, as you know, if you knit with cotton at all, it's uh, uh, it can it can be tougher to knit with and, and wear your hands out. But this this seemed just fine, um, and I can't tell if I have gauge yet. It, I put a ruler up next to it, but it's too small to really tell. And of course, I haven't blocked it, so that's what um, I have to do before I can know if I'm getting the gauge. Which then, if I haven't, means I have to start over. On another one and then I'm gonna have these cut pieces of I don't know anyway that's where I am with that not very far at all but now that I'm done with my shawl then maybe I will have um, a chance to really get moving on that so those are my um, works in progress right now as well as that sock that um, uh, hadn't had any work done on it at all so no need in showing you so let's move on next to our fiber related children's literature book Today's fiber-related children's literature book is called Abuela's Weave. This book is written by Omar Castaneda and is illustrated by Enrique Sanchez. And um, the author is from Guatemala and this story setting is in Guatemala and the illustrator is from the Dominican Republic. When I was teaching um, in the classroom or working in the library, I, um, whenever we did stories from a place that talked about a story that was uh, set in a location that was not in close by. Always pulled out a map to uh, locate that setting. So if you're not from Guatemala, this might be a chance to integrate a little geography with your reading before you start the story. This is a story that's rich in vocabulary and um, it's a very strong family book. Abuela is um, Esperanza's grandmother and they both weave. And weaving is a strong tradition um, and livelihood in uh, Guatemala. And so the story is beautifully illustrated and um, I'd like to show you there sit Esperanza and her grandmother as they are weaving. And notice how they're tied up to a tree and then held on their lap. So that's very different from weaving that I've seen done. And um, I like the way it, it, it shows the geography of where they live that you know it shows a rural setting and you can see it's you know hilly and mountainous and or somewhat mountainous and that there are people working the land in the background so it shows their kind of agricultural um, rural community the story um, has Esperanza and her grandmother doing a lot of weaving because they are going to take their works into market and try to sell them but something about Abuela, the grandmother, is that she has, and I don't know how well you can see here, on her face right here, she has a birthmark. And uh, people in the area sometimes uh, relate this to witchcraft. And so they are. she is concerned that when they go into the town that people may not buy from her because of that. And so as they do travel to market, I'll show you a little more in the illustrations there so you can see some of the weaving obviously if you have a loom and you could uh, or, or if you could set up a loom like this where it's tied to tree and um, you can have the kids your the kids practice with it a little bit more weaving picture there and um, I love this one the nighttime scene because they work late into the night and they're actually working on a special project that even um, Esperanza's mother hasn't seen so they're going to head into the city, and they um, this store uh, page actually talks about her garment, and that right here, some of that um, fabric there is showing a quetzal, um, which is the bird of Guatemala, and it was actually I think used as currency sometimes. They get they um, 
have to travel by walking and carrying the items on top of her head. Now what grandmother has done is covered her entire face and she's dressed as if she's in mourning and she doesn't want anyone to see them together, though she'll be keeping an eye on Esperanza. She doesn't want um, anyone to think that they are together because um, they might not buy from her again. So they have to walk into a little town and catch a bus. There she sits riding the bus and the grandmother's way in the back. They get into the town and when Esperanza gets to the market, she can't really find a place to set up and no one's really willing to help her. And so she gets in between a couple of stalls and then starts to hang the work. And you can see this large tapestry here is the special thing that they were working on and they have tried to weave in picture-wise um, a lot of things about their community or you know their, where they live. And you can see it a little bit better here. And there is that uh, Quetzal bird again. And in the end, everyone loves everything that was handmade not everyone who sells there has handmade items and they all wanted to come back and they are on their trip back home so this is abuela's weave and um i think this is a lovely book about weaving and um i hope you liked it all right let's talk about some giveaways now we had a two color project thread going in the ravelry group and um i had said it was going to end april 13th but some People ask for extension, and so I just took it until today, and I have locked that thread. We had um, we had entries up to 58. Of course, mine was the first one, so 2 through 58 were the numbers that I put in the random number generator, and I came up with number 53, which is M's Little Nest, and she knit a, what she called a not-so-faded sweater. Now, we'll, oh, I didn't think I was... Uh, oh, maybe that a little better no I I think going from the iPad isn't uh, no you can't I'm so sorry I thought maybe you could see it but I'll try to put a picture instead so that you can see um, her not so faded sweater now if you will get hold of me through private message on Ravelry I will get your prize out to you but I said last time I didn't remember what I said the prize was and I went back and listened to that podcast um, the part that I was talking about the knit along and I didn't find or hear myself say anything about what the prize would be. So I'm going to give two choices um, to, and we, we're, I'm going to be pulling one from the chatter thread too. And I'm going to leave it up to you to tell me which you would prefer. One is that I make you the bag that I showed last time, which is, um, it's similar to the, well, this is the exact fabric uh, from my tutorial, the three zipper bag tutorial, but I have a different um, contrast or lining fabric for that. So if you would like a three zipper bag, it's the, the size that will hold maybe two skeins of yarn. It's, it's a smaller bag. It's about eight inches tall, maybe 10 or 11 inches wide. So you can have that, or I have um, some yarn that you can have. And this is a gradient skein and it comes in this little um, container that you can actually run your yarn through and pull you know just have it stay in here this is done roving yarn this is a DK weight and it is um, 500 yards and six ounces so a little bit larger than usual open that up so you can get a better idea of the colors you can see very autumnal colors and it might make um, a medium-sized shawl you know usually when you have that single skein so with being DK, I don't know. Um, it's called Copper and Bronze is the colorway. So 500 yards, six ounces, and it's 100% super washed merino. So you can have your choice of bag or this um, skein of yarn. And now let me um, go pull from the chatter thread. All right, so I went over to our chatter thread in the two color projects and there were 201 entries. And I used the random number generator again and came up with number 89, who is Soccer Ballet Mom. And um, so if you will um, send me your mailing in information through a private message on Ravelry, I will send you your choice of a project bag, which I don't have another one cut out right now, but um, I do have enough of that fabric to make one very similar. So. Um, 
just like for the finished object that or this skein of yarn this is also done roving yarn it is a fingering weight it's called rainforest and it is four ounces with 480 yards so again this would be something you could do um, a color changing shawl with so your choice of the yarn or a project a three zipper project bag so those are our two winners from our two color project um threads and i enjoyed that i enjoyed seeing all of your beautiful things we had some gorgeous sweaters and mitts and and stuffies and just all kinds of two color projects so um i i really enjoyed that and i hope that you did too so our next giveaway let me see hold on our next giveaway is for the 3,000 subscribers on the youtube channel thank you all so much that is so amazing so i love the YouTube comment generator because it or a co comment what do they call it comment picker because it um, filters out any duplicates or any additional replies so um, I can still reply to everybody and um, still do the drawing from that area and of course we're celebrating YouTube subscribers so that's the perfect place to choose the winner from so um, I don't know how it picks but it, it doesn't give me a number it gives me a name and our winner is Chantal C and her favorite thing about spring is listening to the cardinals sing and um, i always have a pair of nesting cardinals in my yard and they're my one of my favorite birds i love when they're nesting to see the male feed the female it is so precious or my bluebirds do the same and it's just i i love that so um chantal is winning this um notions pouch and the last time i showed you um this one which is you know i was working on a, a prototype and i haven't changed it too much but I did add this little tab here that you can um, you can hang stitch markers or progress keepers from that. But I like it for um, when you're trying to close the bag. It gives you a little something to grab onto when you're trying to zip it. I think it needs one on both sides too, but I was already done before I realized that. Um, inside, I have put a few notions and I'm gonna share those with you all. Some clover stitch markers. I like those locking stitch markers so you can remove them. A pair of Ginger embroidery scissors nice and they have the little leather pouch nice for um, cutting your ends these clover needle protectors or they keep your stitches from falling off the needle and um, a little container and two tapestry needles I use that particular kind all the time and my favorite row counter by clover and so that will be going off to Chantal C. And what I need you to do, Chantal, is, because I don't want you putting your address someplace out there in the open, if you will send me a message, if you're in Ravelry, that's great. Um, you can send it to, um, send me a private message. Again, I'm C-L-A-U-S-S-D-K on Ravelry. And um, if you're, <coughs> excuse me. If you're not on Ravelry, you may use my Gmail to send me a message, and I'll put it right here. It's in a pickle knitting at gmail.com. And just tell me that you are a prize winner, and I will get this mailed out to you. So thank you all for your comments. I loved reading about everyone's signs of spring. Um, they There were a lot, of course, simil of similarities, but also uh, some unique responses, and I found them a lot of fun to to read so thank you all for taking your time to share and um congratulations chantal and now for our sock along which is conti continues throughout the year and remember if you put socks in there that are self-patterning self-striping or you've striped or patterned your socks you can enter those twice and also if it's your first pair of socks you may enter it twice so today our numbers um, went up to 533 so I haven't locked this because it continues next time our first number that I'll put in random number generator is 534 and we had ended last time with 453 so I started with 454 so between those 454 and 533 it came up with number 462 which was Laurie Lee 64 and she knit a pair of self patterning stripes um, for her husband and it didn't um, list on this page what um, the colorway was but they were a, a tan and a, a pretty blue so those were lovely Laurie and I hope you um, it enjoyed making them and are excited to win you are winning the skein of two guys yarn company 
It is a tweed in the color Kissed Tangerine. And a fingering weight, it's a BFL, Superwash BFL Donegal Nep with 435 yards. So this will make a nice pair of socks. And if you will get in touch with me, a private message on Ravelry, I will get this mailed right out to you. So congratulations all of our winners today. Now, um, I that leaves us just with a sock along and um, I would like to start another knit along, but I'm not sure exactly what um, would be interesting to all of you. So if anyone has suggestions, why don't you put them in the comment section below and um, we I can come up with something for the next um, podcast and we can start another uh, make along to go along with um, the sock along. Okay, so those are our make. Uh, those are our giveaways for today. Um, I do want to have a little giveaway. Um, I had a lovely designer offer me a pattern and one for all of you, or for one of you as well. And so over in the Ravelry group, I will start a thread for um, to be drawn at the next podcast, and it will be for a shawl pattern from Katrina. Um, Katrina's Creations and this is the pattern she sent me and it is called Banner Unfurled and I thought that was so perfect for uh, any of our patriotic holidays and I thought gee if I did that in a cotton or cotton blend that might be something I could use Memorial Day, 4th of July, Veterans Day. Um, so I, I really like this. It's three colors you can see and she's got some beading in it as well. And um, it was interesting because Katrina works um, in for a library in Maryland, and she's in the bookmobile department. And you know, being a former school librarian and also a bookmobile customer, when I was a girl in grade school, the bookmobile used to come to our school. We had a library in the school as well, but it came to the school, and um, it also came during the summers up there so that we could check out books. And I just have such fond memories of the bookmobile, and I'm so happy that it's still being offered in places so that um, everyone has access to reading something enjoyable. So um, thank you so much for this beautiful pattern. I can't wait to knit it. I'm going to be um, looking for some yarn very shortly for this with this in mind. And so if you will go to the uh, prompt that says um, pattern giveaway, that will be a thread over in the Ravelry group. And just be sure you're a member of the group, and that's easy. You can, if you, you can look right when you do in a pickle knitting and come up to the group page. If it tells you join this group at the top, it means you haven't joined yet. So if it says leave this group, it means you're already a member. So you can just tell and you just click on it and there's no obligation to anything and you won't be harassed on the phone for anything. Just join our group and you can participate in the make-alongs and the giveaways. So we'll, I'll have a little prompt over there. Right now I don't know what it's gonna be. I have a list of them and I don't have it right here. So I'll put something there and if you don't wanna respond to that, just say you want to win a shawl pattern. Okay, so that's coming up. And now for the section of the podcast where I talk about what I'm grateful for. Gr uh, gratitude or gratefulness are, is my word for the year and I'm trying to keep present in my mind things to be grateful for this year. And um, today I, I, there were several things that ran through my head and um, so I'm really grateful for an awful lot today. Just um, little things make me feel very happy. As simple as, I always remember this one, going into Target one day and I got a cart that just, it was so smooth. It was like right off the, I don't know, right off the manufacturing line and it just pushed so well and just cheered me up for the whole day. Just little tiny things can make me really happy. Um, today I'm very grateful for all of the things in nature that um, we have to watch but in particular this week the black swallowtail butterflies that are starting to emerge from their chrysalises um, last fall on my curly leaf parsley as every year I get the little caterpillars which are very fun to watch because um, they hatch you can see them when they hatch from their tiny little um, eggs and every in star that's a stage in their caterpillar life where they um, grow and then molt um, so crawl out of their skin they look different so it, if you saw them at different you might see them on a plant and and think you had five different kinds of caterpillars there and in fact they're all 
the tiger swallow, I mean the black swallowtail. And um, they do always lay their eggs on my curly parsley. They seem to like that one an awful lot. But um, I ran out last year and I'm hesitant to, to buy parsley from the grocery store because one year, um, even though it was listed as organic, all of our caterpillars died after having grocery store um, parsley. So I think there was pesticide in it, which of course that's what they're gonna do is kill the caterpillars. So I've learned not to do that, but they will also eat fennel. So I had fennel last year and they, um, when I bought some fennel plants and when those were all depleted, cause when they get big, they really eat a lot. I went around and um, picked Queen Anne's lace growing wild along roadsides and they like to eat Queen Anne's lace. So they fed on that and I think I ended up with seven and they all pupated and uh, became their chrysalis. And unlike where the monarch butterfly migrates to Mexico to survive the winter. So they, they roost in um, some fir trees in um, central uh, part of Mexico in a, a rainforest. And then they migrate back up when the weather becomes milder. They overwinter by migrating. That's how they survive the change in climate. But the, cat, uh, the black swallowtail overwinters in their chrysalis. And so they will um, just stay all winter long, the late fall ones. If they, if they um, pupate earlier in the spring, summer, they will uh, emerge you know, within a couple of weeks. But these last through the winter. So I kept them in my garage, which is about 20 degrees warmer than outside, but still gets plenty cold in there so that they're actually feeling the climate changes. And um, I've had two emerge so far. And so I'm grateful for uh, the emergence of our butterflies and that um, I was able to get one before it was too wild to put on some flowers and let my grandson uh, have a look at it um, and watch it fly away. So that's what I'm grateful for today, nature. <clears throat> um, thank you so much if you were able to um, get into the Etsy shop update a couple of weeks ago and um, get some yarn or a project bag. I appreciate it so much. It was um, a lot of fun preparing those for you and um, I hope that uh, they will hold many um, fun projects in the future and if you got yarn that you will knit it up or crochet it up into or weave it into something lovely and something that you will enjoy. Um, thank you so much. I um, will be sending a check for um, $300 to the, or and I didn't write the organization name down again. Um, I will put it down here. I'll be um, sending that off um, in memory of my friend Jean. And um, I do still have some of that fabric left and I was thinking as I make the notions pouches, I might just make up a few extra notions pouches and use those for prizes on the um, podcast. I think that would uh, make me very happy. So thank you all if you visited the Etsy shop. Now on the subject of the notions pouch, I am working through some thoughts in my head to um, create a pattern for it. I mean, I did create a pattern for it and um, I'm still kind of tweaking that pattern, but actually print a pattern for it and sell the patterns perhaps through my Etsy shop. And I might do it as PDFs or maybe just as a physical uh, pattern that I would send. And I would do a tutorial on making the Notions pouch. They're very quick and take a small amount of fabric and um, you can do them either as I did this where I quilted together the outside fabric with the lining fabric. It's all finished seams on the inside. There's, um, there are no raw edges. And, or you can buy fabric um, that is pre-quilted. So this fabric was just one a little practice bag I was making. And it's this side, it, is a, a print and this is a different print, but it it's sold this way. And it's, you know, it's it's not inexpensive, um, but I got this at Joann's. I think it ran around $22 a yard, but it's, um, it's actually, that's quite a bit of fabric. You could make quite a few out of that. So you would not need a yard of it, but you would need over a quarter because you need the, you know, sometimes that quarter yards because they don't cut fat quarters there. Um, 
the quarter yards just you know it's nine inches and so that it it really won't work for this but you could get a couple out of a half yard and they always have great coupons so if you waited till you had a 50 percent off coupon um or waited till it was on sale and you just need one zipper again i you really um for this need the wider zipper and that's because you use this width here to enclose that part of the seam so you don't have a raw edge so um I'm I'm gonna I'm thinking about uh, working on that, so um, that might be something that's coming up soon, and coming up even sooner. Today's Thursday, and on Saturday and Sunday this week is Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival over in um, the Howard County Fairgrounds in Maryland, and it's about an hour and a half from where I am. And uh, my husband and I have gone frequently. We went twice last year. We went on Saturday, took my grandson, and um, it was freezing cold and he really wasn't old enough for that. I mean, was not interested for over maybe 10 minutes. So, so we were, uh, you know, long drive there and back and then uh, felt like I didn't see everything. So my husband so kindly said, hey, you wanna go again? We'll go on Sunday. So we went back on Sunday too. Um, so uh, we're planning to go. The, it's supposed to be temperature wise nice. We're having, we're gonna be 90 or more today. So summer just hit us out of nowhere instead of spring. Um, but it is supposed to be in the 70s on the weekend, but it's also supposed to rain on Saturday and possibly a little bit on Sunday. So we might look at uh, what the weather looks like. We lean towards Saturday, but that's the higher percentage of rain. So I'd just rather go on a non-rainy day and it doesn't you know, matter a whole lot to me which day it is. So hopefully we will be there one of those two days. Um, and but I'll say about it, you know, I, I've kind of gone back and forth about going because I, as I was thinking about it last year and thinking about the yarn that I bought, um, most of it's still up there. And, uh, you know, I'm not, really not buying yarn just to have it sit on the shelf and collect dust. I'm buying it to knit with it. And I get places like that and I get so excited. You see things and I'm like, oh, that is so gorgeous. And while you're in that frame of mind and you're right there and it's in your face and you have all that hyped excitement, you forget what you've got and the plans that you've already made, or I do, and I think others do as well. So part of me said, mm, maybe I just shouldn't go because I don't want to just buy yarn. I want to buy yarn that will be knit and I need to knit what I have and what I, I loved as much as anything that I will see. But ultimately, I think I do want to go. Um, there's a couple things I might get that aren't yarn. Um, so I think we're gonna probably be there and just kind of make it an, an outing for the fun of it. So um, that's what's coming up here. And I don't, oh, when I sit here, I always forget what is it that I wanted to say and I write it down, but then I look over and it's like, I think I said everything um, for today. So thanks so much for sticking with me here and um, listening to the bitter end. And I hope that you are enjoying what you're working on, and um, I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. Oh, if you are at Maryland Sheep and Wool and you see me, please say hello. Um, you might recognize me, and I won't recognize you at all, but I'd love to meet anyone who um, is there. Um, I'm not shy if somebody comes up to me, I'm shy to go over to other people, but um, I hope you won't be if um, you'd like to say hello if you see me. So um, maybe I'll see some of you. Bye-bye.